Hello, sports fans, and welcome again to the Fantasy Doctors NBA podcast. I'm your host, Dr. F. Scott Field, and as always, I'm running this fast break with Dr. Robert Pagnani. Here at the Fantasy Doctors, we're using our expertise in the world of sports injuries to bring you to the most up-to-date and injury-specific information to take your fantasy game to the next level and make the best, most well-informed decisions you possibly can. Yes, yeah, Scotty, gone are the days these so-called experts and handicappers throwing darts at the wall and hoping something's going to stick. It's time to take the information that we have at our fingertips, analyze it, and apply our 20-plus years of experience so you can put together and manage the best fantasy hoop squad week to week. So let's go to opening tip. We start, as always, with the point guard position. Devin Harris, right? Veteran point guard of the Dallas Mavericks. He's on his second or third stint at Dallas, I think, now. He sprained his left hamstring on Wednesday um, on Halloween. And uh, they're saying he's probably going to remain out till mid-November or so. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me, right? Hamstrings are kind of a fickle injury, right? You've got that, that back of the leg there, and you're using that to accelerate, to push off, to jump, to cut. If that thing's tender and you come back too early, you really run the risk of doing some damage and being out for quite some time. Yeah, totally agree. I think Harris, too, um, I think, you know, father time starting to play a role in this. He's definitely not going to bounce back as quickly as maybe one of the young guys would with a hamstring. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's actually a pretty decent week as far as uh, the big names are concerned. So, you know, you're going to see a lot of people in this week's injury list that, uh, you know, maybe you haven't heard of before. But moving right along, Sean Livingston, Golden State Warriors. Uh, he's being held out with a right foot injury. Uh, he underwent an MRI on Wednesday on his foot. He came back clean, uh, but the Warriors are still being careful with Livingston at this moment as – it was unclear if he was going to play in tonight's game. I think realistically, you know, we're looking at just just early season tweaks and little injuries that they're just trying to keep, you know, from getting worse and becoming a bigger issue. Yeah. Do you think Golden State even cares who no. plays? I mean, as long as they've got five, they're good to go. No. I mean, it, 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 Clay Thompson the other night put on a just absolute clinic. And, I mean, any one of them can do that at this point. So, like you said, just – Suit him up and get him out there. It doesn't matter. Yeah, what a luxury. Livingston's a great role player. He's been a huge part of their run. Um, but, you know, he's, he's a guy that's going to get minutes deep in the playoffs. And I really think right now they don't care. So they'll take as long as they need to. Yep. Another point guard, Jeff Teague out of Minnesota Timberwolves. So Teague was held out of the previous game to do some soreness in his knee. Um, his backup, Tyus Jones, was a late scratch on Wednesday as well. So this is what led to this miraculous sheet by D. Rose. Um, you know, huge emotional uplifting, puts up a, a big night of stats. And uh, normally we'd say we got to watch him going forward and, and maybe this resurgence of D. Rose. And then all of a sudden, bang, tonight he's playing against Golden State, leaves early with an ankle injury. Uh, we'll have to see what to expect. Yeah, short-lived and uh, somewhat to be expected at this point if you're uh, any sort of a, an NBA fan who's been following D. Rose's history. So not surprising. Um, Alfred Payton of the New Orleans Pelicans, uh, another point guard here, has been day-to-day -day with a right ankle sprain. Uh, it's unclear if he was going to play tonight and through the rest of the weekend. I think we're still looking at just a grade one sprain that they're just kind of taking a little bit slow. You know, you're looking at seven to ten days and he should be just fine. Still yet another point guard, uh, Isaiah Kanan out of Phoenix Suns. He exited Sunday's game with an ankle injury. Uh, looks like it might have swollen up for, on him over the last couple of days. It's the same ankle that he's had problems with in the past, so he could be looking at a few games out. Um, Okobo will likely be drawing the starting point guard position. Um, he, he's in, on the radar in most leagues after he put up 18 points and seven dimes on Sunday anyway. So a name definitely to watch. Yeah, sneaky play. I like him for sure. Um, even, you know, after this injury kind of subsides. Uh, he's been doing some good things down there, uh, and I think it's something that, that Phoenix is trying to build around and build momentum off. So, Yeah. Well, listen, we move from point guard to shooting guard. But uh, the injuries are kind of the same. We got another ankle, Reggie Bullock out of the Pistons. So he needed treatment on his ankle yesterday um, and earlier in the week. He tweaked it. Um, the, he, try, he, he tweaked it in the first quarter of a game, tried to come back in the second quarter, and then the team just ruled him out. 
Um, he's probably having some swelling. He's going to miss a little bit of time. Um, he, he's had a rough season already, kind of just banged up. Um, he might be a guy, if you're looking at fantasy-wise, just drop him now. You know, uh, what this will do is open up a spot for like a Bruce Brown um, because you got Stanley Johnson um, kind of keep an eye on as well. So a lot going on there with Detroit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one of your boys, Donovan Mitchell, the Utah Jazz, he tweaked his right hamstring on Wednesday, uh, but he still finished with 26. So, you know, five assists during a road loss to the Wolves. But, uh, you know, he didn't play again uh, against Memphis. Uh, and if he can't suit up, you're looking at guys like Alec Burks, Dante Exum, and Grayson Allen even getting uh, the benefit of most of his his minutes that he's uh, going to be down. So, Big name there in, in Utah, but uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that one. And, again, we talked about the hamstring and how if you don't treat it right and you don't get the appropriate rehab, you re-injure it, you're looking at a bad injury that's going to take a lot longer to heal. Yeah, this is a big hit here out, out in Utah. Mitchell is kind of the prize uh, of the Jazz. He is borderline one of the most explosive players in the NBA, which means the hamstring is a big deal. Um, you named a couple of names. I think your boy Grayson Allen out of Duke might get the best look out of all those guys. Lord, I hope not. <laughs> we move over to the small forward position, and uh, it's been a while since we talked about the Celtics, uh, but we're headed back to Boston, Jalen Brown. So um, he said on Halloween, right, uh, that he had had pain building up in his right foot over the past week. Plantar fasciitis is what they're saying, which is an inflammation of that tendon that kind of runs along the bottom of your foot. Um, it's one of the more annoying injuries in basketball. And if left untreated, um, you know, you're talking at best maybe a week to recover. Brad Stevens said that Brown will be meeting with an orthotics person to see if there's anything they can do to help alleviate his pain. Um, but owners are going to have to keep an eye on this. He's day-to-day, -day, but he might be a little bit more doubtful as, as these foot injuries play a big role with these guys. Yeah, that plantar fascia, especially in bigger guys, like, you know, we're talking six, six and a half, seven footers, that's a lot of weight being put down on those feet. And over time, that plantar fascia just kind of weakens and weakens and weakens, and their arch eventually kind of drops. Um, and orthotics is a great way to treat that, right? They, they custom fit a, a mold to the foot, and they put it in the shoe so that it keeps the arch upright and you've got that nice bend in the foot. I think, in our, you know, with orthotics, that's a great way to, to almost save an entire season, you know. Um, we'll just have to kind of keep an eye on it and see if that's the treatment route they go. Yeah, hopefully that will work. In the past, with an injury a, a, as simple as a plantar fascia, um, you've seen guys in boots, on crutches. Uh, there's a lot of levels of this. Like you said, we're pulling for the uh, arch supports to get the job done for them. Yeah, sure. Chandler Parsons, the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, you know, it was only a matter of time for this guy to end up on our injury report, and he's battling right knee soreness. Uh, you talked about it a little bit last week, Bobby, but father time is definitely hitting the Memphis Grizzlies hard this season. Uh, Parsons just can't stay healthy. Uh, I'd say he belongs on the wire pretty much everywhere at this point. You know, Kyle Anderson's got a great opportunity to get it going against the Suns. Uh, he played 29 minutes in his last outing. I think that's the name we're going to see more of over the course of the season. Yeah, to be honest with you, Scotty, the only way I know Parsons is even still in the league is when I check the injury report yeah. from month to month. He just has had a bad run ever since he left uh, Dallas, and, and the knees are not being good to him. I, I don't think he's got much left in him. Uh, too bad, but a uh, rough couple of years for him. For sure. So Maurice Harkless, Portland Trailblazers, he sat out the last two games due to soreness in his left knee. Um, the Blazers might just shut him down a little bit and, and wait for him to heal up. Um, in the meantime, what the Blazers have done is go with a three-guard lineup. Um, Nick St Stoskis, Seth Curry, and even Evan Turner have seen, you know, 25-plus minutes per game over the last two um, not really looking at any of those guys being one that you can depend on in like a fantasy lineup. Um, but if you get in a pinch, they might be able to help you out with the night. Yeah, moving right along, um, we're looking at the power forward position. Daniel Thies of the Boston Celtics, torn plantar fascia. This is a little bit more serious and kind of like what you talked about. He's going to be in a walking boot for at least the next two weeks. Uh, but he said he'll progress to running once it comes off. Expects to be day-to-day -day at that point. 
recovery time on a tear like that, though, you're talking four to six weeks for optimal performance. So, uh, you know, I don't think this is uh, just a little injury like we talked about with, you know, sore plantar fasciitis or a flare up. This is a full on tear where it's, it's going to be a while to heal. Yeah, that, that's rough. Four to six weeks. Pretty hopeful for that. Another big man. Laurie Markkanen, Chicago Bulls. There we go. There we go. Right there, they are. Uh, so they said just an update. He's been doing some straight line running. He had this injury to his elbow that he sustained in practice weeks ago. So he's ditched his brace about ten days ago, and they're saying that he's on track for this six to eight week uh, timetable. And and Thanksgiving looks like kind of the the return. His coach said that he's weeks away from any contact drills. Um, Jabari Parker is going to get a lot of the opportunity um, in the meantime. And uh, basically what will happen is uh, Chandler Hutchison will get off the bench a little bit too, maybe get a few minutes. But I would bet that Parker is the one that benefits the most from, from this. Yeah, for sure. And that's, that's one that, uh, you know, you got to wonder on a guy like that if – his size didn't just play a little bit of a part in that, you know, I mean, such a big dude. And we've, we've talked about a lot of the bigger men that are playing positions that might not normally be right. It, it's not quite the center position, but it's, he could play center, you know, and, and, and so just an oversized guy in, in a position that's a little bit challenging could have led to that, uh, that injury. I feel like, um, but one of the big names we've got this week, Kevin Love right out in Cleveland there, he was dealing with left foot soreness toe issue we talked about possible turf toe in the past uh so painful that it was uncomfortable for him to put any pressure on it and he did undergo an mri uh he didn't have an official timetable uh but <laughs> we find out today that love had surgery uh and now he's going to be out for four to six weeks uh hopefully for the bone to heal uh he met with a renowned foot surgeon dr martin o'malley um and uh, larry nance figures uh to be the big name to benefit while love is out. But, uh, and, and Nance had a good season last year. He kind of tore things up at the end of the season there. I thought he fit in pretty well there, but Kevin love again, big injury. Well, small injury turned big, really four to six weeks for the bone to heal on that one post-surgically. So. Yeah. Things just continue to fall apart in Cleveland. You hate to see a surgery this early in the season, especially for a guy like love. Um, this one's going to be one that, that could affect us for, uh, you know, a couple months even looking at him. But you're right. Nance stepped up when he had the chance last year, and uh, I think he'll probably do the same. Yeah, and the, the Cavs just lost their coach, coach recently as well, didn't they? Yeah, it is. Uh, I think we're going to start uh, getting ready for draft picks in Cleveland. Yeah. 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 Which, you know, I mean, they needed they needed a little bit of rebuilding there after the exit of LeBron anyway, so. Not, uh, not the end of the world there in Cleveland. Uh, you know, we just got one quick update, Scotty, on the center position. And, and, again, it's more of an update. Boogie Cousins, a name we've been waiting for. If you remember, he tore his Achilles when he was with the Pelicans last year. Had to have surgery. Uh, he was cleared for five-on-five -five drills as he continues to uh, heal from that surgery and recovery recover from it you know we might start being able to put a timeline on this again though we go back to it's golden state right the rich get richer uh, yeah they don't they don't need anything uh they, they just gonna let him heal up and probably just would like him ready to uh help make a run at the end again so we'll see what happens with him all right scotty that brings us to the picks for the week and i'll go ahead and kick us off my first pick is a guy that I liked a lot last year, and I'm bringing him up again, Lou Williams, shooting guard for the Clippers. He's been averaging 18 a game, up from his career average of 13. And his last two outings, he's put up 28 and 26. Uh, what I really like is he's gone 7 for 10 from behind the arc in those two games. Um, he's also shooting 92% from the free throw line. So, you know, he's going to get plenty of looks. He's going to get plenty of opportunities. Clippers have a bit of a break through the weekend, and then they start rolling through the Western Conference grind a little bit. My big thing is, Scotty, name me another Clipper right now. Go. I got nothing. There you go. So I think Lou Williams gets plenty of opportunity there. Yeah. Sticking with the shooting guard position, my second guy, Karis LeVert, shooting guard for the Nets. I needed to just pull somebody out from the Nets. 
right? So this guy is now getting more minutes than ever. He's averaging 32 minutes a game. Yes. Scoring average is nearly doubled, and he's putting up big numbers against big teams. Including tonight, he put up 29 on CP3 in the Houston Rockets. Uh, and, and then last week, he had an outing where he put up 23 against Golden State. I like him. He's a big-time finisher, um, and the Nets are eyeing up the Sixers, the Suns, and the Nuggets. So a, a name to keep an eye on. I had a uh, person that follows us uh, shoot me up a message and say, hey, we're two weeks into this, and you haven't picked a jazz guy yet. <laughs> so here I am. Got a jazz guy for us. I wanted to start talking about Donovan Mitchell. But we talked about his hamstring a little bit. So who I'm going with is Ricky Rubio, the floor general for the jazz. Now, Donovan Mitchell has come out this season tearing it up in his sophomore campaign, right? He's opened up the floor, and what that's done for the point guard, Rubio, is, uh, you know, spread it out and let him operate. He's averaging nine points and seven assists a game, which, you know, fair numbers. But he's shooting almost 40% from behind the arc and 82% on free throws. So Mitchell's a little banged up. If you know the Jazz well like I do, teams are eyeing up Joe Ingles, 40% three-point shooter. What it's doing is opening it up for Rubio. He's got Nuggets and Raptors up next. Um, I think he capitalizes on a little bit of downtime from uh, Donovan Mitchell and, and uh, the floor spread out. Yeah, I, uh, I actually uh, picked a jazz guy as well this week. Uh, Rudy Gobert, the big man out there in uh, your hometown of Utah. Uh, I think he's going to have a big week based on the injury to Donovan Mitchell. That was my pick uh, for, for Mitchell going down. Uh, you know, he's been making a big name for himself amongst the big men this year. Uh, and like you said, they're playing Denver where there's just never any defense uh, and the Raptors coming up. So I like him, uh, you know, for this week. Uh, my second pick is Ben Simmons. I'm going anti-Nets. Uh, he had a double-double against the Clips the other night. He's starting to heat up. We haven't really heard much from him this season. Uh, I think he gets going against the Nets and Detroit over the next two games. So Ben Simmons is my pick. He was my pick for quote-unquote rookie of the year last year. Um, if you can kind of count that as his rookie season. But uh, final pick of the week, uh, Damian Lillard, a guy I liked a lot last year uh, out there in Portland. I think, you know, he keeps the points category flowing, especially with Harkless out right now. I just think that he's the, he's the guy. I mean, he's the name out there. He's the one that's going to keep it going. Uh, you know, in Portland's again, another one of those teams I feel like is going to fly under the radar, but uh, the unfortunate thing is they're still in the West. So at some point come playoff time, it's, uh, it's going to be a tough road for anybody in the West. That's not golden state. Love the pick Scotty. Uh, you know, I'm still a little bit, uh, Bitter about the Ben Simmons Rookie of the Year thing, obviously, with Mitchell, but can't deny what he gets done. Uh, Gobert, love a defensive player of the year, and you're absolutely right. I think he's going to benefit from Mitchell being out. And then uh, Lillard, I got to say, went to school at Weber State University just up the road from where the Jazz play. All quality picks, Scotty. Absolutely. Yep, thanks. Well, we appreciate you guys tuning in week after week to hear all the injury updates, and uh, we hope to keep up with giving you the guys the most uh, in-depth and useful information so that you guys can take those and make the best possible picks you can and the most well-informed decisions for your fantasy uh, basketball leagues. Uh, thanks again for listening. We hope to see you guys next week.